Halfway through the first hour, you're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday evening. It is May 10th, 2012. I am your host, James Burns. And for the rest of this hour, we are joined by my dad, Kerry Burns. He is the host of Cannabis Corner, which is a very popular web show up on YouTube. His website is CannabisCorner.com. Kerry, welcome to the show. James, it's great to be with you. How's it going? Well, it's going. Just uh, doing my show, doing my thing, getting ready for the weekend. And if you would like to uh, ask us any questions over the next 30 minutes, feel free and uh, log on to the uh, chat room, ronpaulradio.com slash listen, ronpaulradio.com slash listen. The phone lines were not working for me earlier, so that's the only way you're going to be able to ask any questions for Kerry Burns, host of Cannabis Corner. Uh, first off, give people a bit uh, 411 about yourself and um, the show. Well, the, uh, we started the Cannabis Corner. We're celebrating the second year anniversary, actually, coming up on uh, in the middle of June of this year. And uh, the idea from the beginning was to educate people about the truth about cannabis and not all these fabricated lies that people have been brainwashed with by the government for the last seven or eight decades in this country. And that's basically what the uh, format of the show is. We, we don't... Uh, you know, we give our opinions about things, but we don't give out information unless it is factual information. We do a lot of research and make sure that all the facts are, are straight and all. And uh, so it's uh, it's a real good show, and and I I really enjoyed doing it. I'm uh, I'm I'm a proud pot smoker, if I can say that. <laughs> 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 and most most of the people who are like me and have for a long time, you know, they know that it's wrong for it to be illegal. I mean, you've got hardcore liquor out there for legal, that uh, people can buy legally. I mean, you're worried about cannabis. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line, not to mention it's your God-given right and your constitutional right to decide what's best for you and your, what you put into your body. You're, you're the one that's in control of your body and all. And so it's absolutely ridiculous that we even have a law that says you can't use an herb or a particular plan if you decide that you want to use that for your health or for whatever reason. So, Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter uh, what it is. I mean, history has proven that you really can't stop people from using anything by making it illegal. I mean, look at prostitution. It's illegal in most states, yep. and yet people still seek out uh, that particular service. And look who runs it, the organized crime. Exactly. And uh, back in Prohibition with that mm -hmm. alcohol illegal. What did we do? We created all the uh, gangs, all the murdering gangs and stuff that were fighting over the bootlegging and the beer running and all that. Then we, that wasn't enough. A couple of years after they finally got alcohol legal, then they said, oh, let's jump on cannabis here, you know, and destroy the hemp industry. And that's what happened. And for seven or eight decades, that's what they've been doing. They reinforced it with the, you know, in 1960 with the Singles Narcotics Treaty and then 10 years later with the uh, Controlled Substance Act. And, all it's done is propagate crime in this country. That's it. Yeah, that's it. it. It's, un, it's unreal. And people are just asleep. Well, it's another prime example how we are really no longer the, the land of the free. Because if we truly respected people's freedoms and liberties, we would allow people to partake in you know, whatever recreational activities they so desire, as long as they're not hurting one else in the process. That's right. And, and, and cannabis, you know, f from historically... I mean, from day, from since we've had written record, nobody has ever overdosed on cannabis, ever. Nobody's ever died from it. Nobody's ever been to a hospital in America for it, not one time. I mean, there are people that have been to the hospital for aspirin overdose. And, you know, we didn't jump on them and, you know, surround their car, take all their possessions away after they were arrested and, and you know, seize every, th every asset they have because we just know they're connected to uh, Al-Qaeda and the cartel. And it just, you know, it's what this what's happened. And it began in the 30s when they passed the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act. They knew what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. They were setting up the future of what everything you've seen happen became. And it was all because they knew they were going to make a bunch of money off of it. They were going to be able to control society. And that's what they've accomplished. They and create, you know, all the gangs to boot to blame it on. But. Well, yeah, there's definitely a double standard because you have our troops in Afghanistan guarding poppy and marijuana fields. Meanwhile, you get caught with either substance here in the States, 
you're going to jail. Right. It was the same thing when the uh, Nicaraguan Sandinistan conflict was going on. That was all about protecting the cocaine trade coming into America. People don't know it, but if you if you had the hardcore facts and you and you could read them and all and get a hold of them, and, and there's there's been sworn test testimonies from DEA agents that loaded cocaine on. American planes that you know that were bound for the United States, and that was controlled by our government. And all that whole conflict was about selling cocaine to raise money, so they could turn around and buy guns to ship down there to support the war effort down there, because they were trying to fight the you know communism coming into this part well, of the world. Well, the, the same farce has happened recently with uh, Fast and Furious. Exactly. Yeah, they you know, Eric Holder comes out, he blames uh, gun owners and uh, sh- gun shops and uh, these uh, these big time. Uh, what they do, you know, gun shows right. on all the gun violence in uh, Mexico. Yet it came out that the ATF were the ones shipping the guns right. down there. Well, the the cartels don't want those uh, shotguns and rifles yeah. and stuff. That's absurd. Exactly. I mean, la- when was the last time you sh- you saw fully automatic machine guns and grenade launchers exactly. at, at the local gun shop? Exactly. And and let alone the ammunition for them. You Exa- know? I mean, it's just insane. <laughs> but the same things happen over and over again. Mm. And. Yet at the same time, they want to punish the citizens. Yet they're they're benefiting from both sides. Well, those are military style weapons, and the only way you get military style weapons that are current, what the military is currently using, and all the you know CIA and all those type groups, is you have to be connected with somebody in high rankings of government, and so somebody in the high rankings of governments in the arms business, sh- supplying the cartel with arms. That's if they're not controlling the cartel themselves, I'd be surprised. But, but it's too bogus. It's been bogus. It's, we've talked about this for four or five decades now, about how wrong it is and how bogus it is and, and all the people that are get, getting arrested for just because they want to smoke pot. I mean, it's, it's insane. Well, it absolutely is. And, and I mean, while, while your focus is obviously on marijuana, cannabis, yeah. you know, I, I admire everyone else's, you know, What's Folk, a, it's a constitutional freedom yeah. stand all yeah. together is what yeah. it is. But now, I mean, my yeah. personal belief is, you know, I don't care if if marijuana would kill you stone dead, the moment you smoked it. Yeah, I think you should have a right to smoke it. Yeah, or, or like, you know, we we've talked about this extreme before. Well, it wouldn't take shows. long before the cartel wouldn't be selling anymore. Well, I know, but, <laughs> but that's the point. I mean, the, the facts are that cannabis is not harmful. No, at all. But at the same time, even if it were har- harmful, right. that's none of my business. Right. As someone who's you know a well, staunch... It, it's cons- not anybody's business. It's right. It's not anyone's business anywhere to tell anyone what to do. For their own per- for their own personal choice, uh, James. I, s- I saw that you were using Charmin toilet tissue. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to start using Angel Soft. You know, and, <laughs> and oh, and when you when you switch that too, by the way, yeah. uh, you know, start buying the uh, yeah. You have to use le- the you have to use less. And start less. buying the uh, like a, Nolan uh, Ryan steaks from Kroger's. You yeah. know, be sure you get that brand yeah. of meat. You're, you're and, giving uh, too many free plugs out there. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah, but I'm just saying <laughs> it, it's that type. It's the same type of control, and it uh, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah, exactly. I mean, we should have a right to freedom of choice and to as long as we're not hurting this is my philosophy as long as you're not hurting somebody else in the process i don't care well you know in 1970 when nixon and all of his cronies conjured up the controlled substance act and all he did just like uh hoover did before fdr uh had a commission signed to look at alcohol and and they studied it for about a year and they told hoover look you need to make this legal of course he ignored it he ignored his own study nixon had the same thing the shaver commission they spent an entire year. This, this uh, Raymond Shaver was a federal judge, and and he had a group of elite, smart people that looked at this for over a year. And their final conclusion, they told Nixon, you should take this off the Controlled Substance Act. This needs to be completely decriminalized. There's nothing wrong with cannabis. All the state of LaGuardia study in New York which was done in the 50s uh, by Mayor LaGuardia himself. He was, just, he was trying to, he was saying, this is ridiculous, all this, you know, information. So the lies have been going on for decades. But when you're the president, you can say, yeah. I ignore well, it. Well, the you powers know? that be, you know, rarely listen to anybody's advice. Kerry Burns is my guest. His website, CannabisCorner.com. We'll be right back with more Freedom Files right here on Ron Paul Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday evening. It is May 10th, 2012. I am James Burns, and the Freedom Files radio show is live four nights a week, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 11 Central, 10 to midnight Eastern, right here on ronpaulradio.com. 
My guest, final segment with him, Kerry Burns, my dad, the host of the Cannabis Corner, his website, CannabisCorner.com. And in the final moments uh, we have together, Dad, I wanted to talk about all these um, activist uh, leaders and groups out there. I mean, we can't mention them all, but there are definitely a couple worth mentioning. Right. I mean, you got, you know, Normal Leap, which is the law enforcement against prohibition. Of course, the Teapot Party that uh, our buddy Willie, uh, the Marijuana Policy Project, Louisiana, uh, legalized Louisiana, Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul, of course, and uh, liber- Libertarian presidential nominee Gary Johnson. And uh, we also kn- uh, know that uh, vice presidential nominee Judge Jim Gray is also on board from California there. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that are really strong in the movement and all. Now, Legalize Louisiana, they've got a march coming up uh, on Saturday, the, May the 12th. starts at 3 o'clock. It's in all, most of the major cities in Louisiana, Hammond, Monroe, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lafayette, and Shreveport. And uh, they begin at 3 o'clock. Central. Uh, Central time. And uh, these, uh, this would be a great way for people to uh, get involved. If, you really, if you're out there, if you use cannabis and you're sick and tired of the laws and you're sick and tired of the way that cannabis users are treated, then it's best that you go and uh, support these groups like that and, these, and these, these marches and all and show your support because the public needs to be educated. They have been brainwashed so many decades with so many layers of lies that they are a hard cookie to crack. And you've got to show your support. Show them that you are proud to be a cannabis user. Show them that you don't, you do believe in constitutional rights and you do believe in personal freedoms and all. And that those are things that the government doesn't have any right at all to control. No matter who's in there. It doesn't matter who's the president or who's in the Congress or whatnot. That's just something that people don't have a right to do. And I like this Louisiana, uh, legalized Louisiana group. They've been together a little over two years. They promote justice, equal justice for all. They promote health, good health, and they, they are, you know, they're strong to support the hemp industry, which uh, would be the economic solution in America right now. Yeah, well, they, well, they, they tackle the entire issue. They're not just yeah. coming at it from one specific. Right, point. it's not just, can- and that's what we do. We do, we want, we want cannabis legal. Not, you know, f- of course, people should be able to smoke and all that. But one of our our biggest thing really is the promotion of the hemp industry. What we're holding back because we're worried about our children getting a hold of a little bit of pot. I mean, that's really basically what it comes down to. And we have a we have a drug enforcement agency. They've been petitioned dozens of times over the last three or four decades. It took 20 years for them to even look at one of the petitions. And, you know, they looked at it and finally said, oh, no, bump, we're not going to do that. And they've denied every one of them, even though they're all backed by scientific research. They're backed by statistics, which the government just fails to uh, even inquire about. And it's just... It's just really sad that we have a, an agency in the government that is that powerful, that that elite, that controlling, that they have the absolute call on something that if they do make cannabis legal, they lose their job. Yeah. Well, and another issue here is it shows you exactly the disdain that our government has for our Constitution and the Bill of Rights it's and the, the amendments. Truth. Because say what you will about the uh, alcohol prohibition, and it was wrong, but at least they went through... Uh, Congress to get an amendment to sure. make, to yeah. make al- alcohol illegal. Right. They eventually repealed it, of course. Right. But they didn't even do that for the war on drugs. No, absolutely not. It was just, it was met behind closed doors, and but you know the gavel was hit, and it became law. I mean, it just uh, it's it's it, none of it was constitutionally based, and it's wrong. It's it's constitutionally it's it's wrong. I mean, it's just absolutely nothing in our constitution that says you cannot use this this plant. Our forefathers grew it. They smoked it. I mean, it, uh, you know, the history's there. I mean, it goes back 10,000 years, you know, and, and before the early Chinese dynasties and all of those. Those people were growing and using hemp and making fabrics from it and stuff. So it has a long, long history, uh, not to mention the 50 million people in America that are daily smokers, you know. It's, it's as many as that smoke cigarettes out there. But unfortunately, the people who smoke cigarettes are going down the path of lung cancer. And if they were smoking pot instead, of course, they wouldn't be able to smoke as much, but uh, they certainly would avoid at least cancerous carcinogens because there's been two different studies, one just done by the University of Alabama, and they show that uh, they, they doubled the, uh, the uh, show that, that was done in Berkeley, and uh, they proved that, that cannabis was not carcinogenic. They also showed that at the study in Alabama, and they also showed that young people who smoke cannabis actually increase their lung capacity, not decrease it. 
there was actually an increase in airflow and an increase in ability of air capacity and all. So they didn't see that in the long term, the older patients and all. But I mean, you, you're going to have somewhat diminished lung capacity anyway as you get older. You're, you know, it's not like you stay at 21 the rest of your life. But mm -hmm. well, but with every single um, study that comes out. You know, they, they come out with more and more medicinal benefits of smoking cannabis. Oh, well, it's been known for... See, that's the thing. They, the All of this hocus-pocus about the Controlled Substance Act and what it's done all, it has actually f frailed research that could have actually been extremely beneficial to a lot of people that have already died. I mean, how do we know that, that the cannabis herb isn't the, isn't the a anti-tumoral drug of the century. How do we know that? Why? Because for three or four decades, this government refused to let anybody in any type of research capacity do any type of research on cannabis unless it was to show the detrimental causes of it. They had their own little marijuana farm in Oxford, you know, up there in Mississippi, and, they, and, that, and the government did their own studies there. Of course, none of it was ever published. I wonder why. Surprise. Because they never found nothing. That's why. <laughs> I mean... It, and typical of our government. Typical. And I mean, it, mm -hmm. but there's no argument, though. I mean, you have, you have hardcore whiskey legal out there that you can go and drink. And if that's legal, heroin ought to be legal. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's insane. That's, the, that's where our society is. We, just, we have the society that, you know, just, hey, I'm drinking Jack Daniels. Oh, I'm salt of the earth here. You know, and, and somebody yeah. popping pills, they, oh, I got this from my doctor. <laughs> those aren't drugs, you know, and it just but, but those pot smokers. Let's yeah. lock them up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that everybody deserves to write. I think that everyone that smokes marijuana deserves to smoke marijuana without being bothered. The same thing goes with the, the, the hard liquor drinkers. As long as you're not getting behind the wheel and, and beating your spouse. That's exactly right. I don't care. As long as you're not hurting anybody else, whether it's pill popping, smoking marijuana, drinking, well, et cetera, or even smoking cigarettes, yeah. cannabis, more power to you. Yeah, you know, forever they said, you know, they had all the propaganda. Cannabis turns you into this monster and demon and all that and all. You know, people are people. And how you're raised has a lot to do with how you act when you're an adult. And if, and if you're taught responsibility and if you're taught how to be responsible and how to respect, be respectful of others and learn the golden rule yep. where you don't do something to someone you wouldn't yep. have done to yourself. Yep. If people would learn those simple principles, and all, it wouldn't matter if they smoked pot, wouldn't no. matter if they drank whiskey, wouldn't matter if they, exactly. what they did because they know to be responsible. Exactly. The cannabis doesn't, you know, you don't smoke that, oh, I think I'm going to go out and just beat the hell out of somebody. You know, yeah. that doesn't happen. No, it people, doesn't. That people that, that do things like that, they were going to do it if they smoked pot or not. It's just because that's the way they are. Pot doesn't bring that out in somebody. That's the way they are with or without it or with or without whiskey or with or without their pills or whatever. Anything. It, it, is, it, is, it is what's wrong with this society is we have this general measure of control that everybody ought to be. And if you're not like that, by God, there's something wrong with you. And I'm going to just lock you up because you're so damn different. You know? Exactly. And instead of really listening to the people and, and, and learning, I mean, that's why I said we thwarted just so much research that could have been so beneficial for people that are laying out in the cemetery yeah. right now. Yeah, and not just for uh, you know, recreational users or medicinal users, but also my big issue is you know, the industry itself, yeah. the hemp industry. Oh, my God. The factories, jobs, businesses yes. that we could have. Listen, the, the cannabis sales are nothing. Even if you had everybody in the country smoking pot, it would it would not be a lot of money because once it's made legal, the, the this is a cartel price that they're paying now that's mm -hmm. out there. That's going to fall. It's going to be like tobacco, about a dollar a pound, and you. You could grow everything that if everybody in America smoked pot, you could grow all that in, in the state of Rhode Island yeah. and, and, and not eat up any farm. Yeah. But it's the hemp industry. If we started making hemp fuel and replace it with this oil that we're bringing, and all, from the, and all the countless products, 50, hemp. over 50,000 products, yep. all, but it would be a trillion and a half dollar industry. That's where the money's at. It's not in the cannabis. That's ridiculous. It absolutely is. Uh, Kerry Burns was my guest. His website is thecannabiscorner.com. Uh, Kerry, um, what other places can we find you? Just like your website, CourseCannabisCorner.com, YouTube. YouTube.com. Go to the can YouTube slash Cannabis Corner. And also we have a Facebook uh, there, Carrie Burns Facebook, so you can get us on there. We, we post all the stuff on all those. So. Exactly. A great web show. Be sure and check out all their shows, all of Dad's shows. CannabisCorner.com is the website. Dad, thank you so much for joining me this evening. And be sure and check out his website, CannabisCorner.com. Thank you, James. A real pleasure. It's Freedom Files right here on ronpaulradio.com.